Hey guys, we're going to do some cool fill ideas that's based on a sticking you might not have uh, worked with before. This is called linear sticking. Now, linear drumming is basically when two things do not overlap. You don't play two things at the same time. So a normal money beat uh, kind of groove with the kick, hi-hat, and snare where things hit at the same time is nonlinear. That's what this is, nonlinear. Linear would be when nothing overlaps at the same time. Anything that's overlapping doesn't happen. So you have kick, hat, snare at all different times. So that's a, that's a linear groove. Now what we're mainly going to talk about here is taking that concept of uh, linear playing and uh, using it around the kit in fills instead of in grooves. You can play basically any groove you want and then break into this like linear pattern, it still fits. But it sounds different because you're not playing two or three things at once that overlap and kind of fill up the sound, make it fat. Things feel more uh, separated and it sounds a little more complex than it really is. So just to make sure that you guys understand, here's a non-linear fill. This is a, a, a fill where things do overlap. Okay, a non-linear fill is what I just played, but here's a, a linear fill idea where nothing overlaps. And then we're going to break it down and get some ideas as, as far as specific sticking. So here's a linear fill. Okay, those are linear fills where nothing happens at the same time. If you noticed, I played either kick or toms or snare, but nothing at the same time. One linear concept on fill-wise is to use groups of 16th notes, one E and a, two E and a. We've got four groups of those in one measure, 16 16th notes in uh, one whole measure. And to break it up, instead of just using our toms, digga, 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 digga. Let's add our kick in there to make it a little bit more interesting. Now the, the kick is going to move around in these examples. The first example that I'm going to show you is the kick on the first note of every group of four. So that would be one E and uh, two E and uh, three E and uh, four E and uh. So the, the kick is on all the quarter notes, the one, two, three, and four. Sounds like this. Now that's based on a sticking of right left right left which is called alternate sticking. All I did was I replaced my first right hand that would normally overlap my kick with just a solo kick by itself. So it's kick left right left, kick left right left. Okay? You can use that all around the toms shadowing like this. Or you could split it up by having one hand stay on the floor tom, one hand stay on the rack tom. And get a whole nother feel, okay? Now, speeding that up. Get some different ideas going there. It sounds, again, pretty complex. It's really just the alternate sticking, right, left, right, left, that we're probably used to in the old fill, da, 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 da. but now we're taking our, our kick and we're putting it in that fill to kind of break it up a little bit. It gives it a whole different edge. So if you played those as 16th notes, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a, you'd have four sets of those in one measure. I have a four piece kit, so I use, you know, two of the uh, repetitions on one drum. You can also do a different pattern. You got to double up on something. Any pattern you want. You could also use your hi-hat. Kind of mix it around a little bit. You could also leave another space. If you only have a couple drums to work with, leave that space, leave that big uh, rest in there because it kind of lets it breathe a little bit and it kind of gives it a little bit of, uh, of uh, space. Okay, one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four. 
Okay. Now that's 16th notes. Let me show you what that would be in a groove. Okay. That's a fill that we're going to play with just a standard eighth note uh, money beat. Don't forget eighth notes are one and two and three and four and, and the fill we just did is 16th notes. So that's one E and a, two E and a. 16th notes are twice as fast as eighth notes because you've got twice as many of them in the space of one measure. So with my groove being one and two and, my fill is going to be one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. It sounds like this. Now that's just playing it as 16th notes. You can also do it as 8th notes and stretch them out. You're only going to need two of them because you're going to play 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and. They're going to feel like they're the same speed as your groove because they are. You're playing 8th notes on the hi-hat, 8th notes on your toms. That sounds like this. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1. Here's an example. I played that a little faster. So that was our first combination, which is kick, left, right, left. Okay, we're going to uh, explore a few other sticking combinations in the next couple of lessons and move that kick around to different spots. The first one, though, is pretty easy to get because the, the kick is on the downbeat. So try to mess around. Here's one more final example that I'm going to leave you with. Put the kick uh, on the 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 like we did on 16th notes. We're going to break the rules just a little bit. It's technically uh, linear fill with the left, right, left, but the first part is nonlinear because we're going to put a crash or a hi-hat with the kick. So it kind of punches it a little bit so it's not just kick all by itself. Okay, here's the last example in this one. Ready? Here's that one just a little bit faster to get an idea of what you can do with it.